Hi everyone, it's Andrea here with part two of my August book haul. I said I was going to do it in three parts. Um, the first part was the very magical book haul, which was the Harry Potter stuff. And this one is my book two on a budget haul because I have got 14 books to show you now. And these 14 books cost less than five pounds the lot. I'm not joking. I bought 14 books or got 14 books for less than five pounds. None of them are from the library. Two of them are borrowed. So I'm just gonna go through them, tell you a little bit about them, where I got them from and how much they cost me. Okay, so let's start. So uh, the first books I bought were in my local branch of a certain supermarket where every little helps. They have not only brand new books, but they also have a charity uh, bookshelf as well. So I had a look on there and I got, for 50 pence each, I got The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell. I, I have seen this on booktube and I wanted to read it for a while so I thought I'd pick that one up. And the second one I bought is one that's got mixed reviews but again it was only 50 pence and that's The Woman in Cabin 10. Now I know Peter over at Peter Light Book says he hates this book, it's awful. I thought for 50 pence it's worth a try, I'll have a read of it. So, And then it'll probably be unhauled and sent back to the charity shop. So those were from my little branch of Every Little Helps. The next book I bought in Newport City Centre. Now if you know Newport, where I, I, I live near, if you go onto Commercial Street, down past the Quick Kingsway Centre towards the Tom Toy Lewis, there's some charity shops uh, along there and there's also a bookshop. You go in that bookshop and you can get three books free. Anything over that you need to make a donation. I only got one book, my partner he picked up two books. The book I got was called uh, An Anatomy of Ghosts and it's by Andrew Taylor. Love the cover. It's set in 1786 in Jerusalem Colin Cambridge and there's a ghost of a murdered woman Sylvia Witchcut prowling the grounds. Ooh, so yeah kind of spooky so I quite like the idea of that one. So that one was completely free. Now Newport, like everywhere, has lots of charity shops. I went around a few. There wasn't, out, wasn't books in every single shop that I wanted, but I did go into uh, the British Heart Foundation shop and I picked up quite a few. So these are all, the next lot are all from the British Heart Foundation. Their paperbacks are 25 pence each and their hardbacks are 50 pence each. So the first one I got is A Flash Forward by Robert J. Sawyer. Apparently it's a hit new TV series. I've not heard of it. Suddenly, without warning, all seven p billion people on Earth black out for two minutes. Millions die as planes fall from the sky, men and women tumble down staircases and cars plough into each other. But that's the least of the survivors' problems during the blackout. Everyone experienced a glimpse of what his or her future looks like. <sighs> and the influx in mosaic of these visions threaten to unravel unra the present. I mean, come on, that sounds absolutely brilliant. So that was 25 pence. So the next one is called Wicked Autumn and it's by GM Malliot and that was 25 pence as well. It, obviously it was one of the three for five of the works originally. 25p. You can't go wrong even if it's no good and it gets unhauled. It's worth it. Uh, basically Max Tudor has adapted well to his post of Vicar of St Ewald's in the idyllic village of Nether Monkslip. The quiet village seems the perfect home for Max who has fled a harrowing pass as an MI5 agent. Now he has found a measure of peace among urban escapees and yoga practitioners, artists and crafters and new ages. But this newfound security is, or serenity even, is quickly shattered when the highly vocal and unpopular present of the Women's Institute turns up dead at the Harvest Fair. Her death looks like an accident but Max's training as a former agent kicks in and very soon he suspects foul play. <laughs> Whoa! So yeah, I mean, a vicar, MI5 agent turned vicar, what's not to love about that? Now the next book is, I think it's actually a modern classic, and that is Birdsong by Sebastian Forbes. Now I'm not going to go into what this is about. Um, I bought this because Newport Playgoers are actually doing this in 2017, um, and I wanted to read it before I watched the play so I know what it's about. Um, obviously it's set during World War One. We were originally going to do this as part of our um, anniversary of the beginning of the war in 2014-15 but we couldn't do it because somebody else professionally wanted to take it out on tour but we are finally doing it. I'm really looking forward to the play. I'm really looking forward to picking up this book soon. So that was another one. And again, 25 pence and it's how long? 500 pages? They also had this one in Tesco for some reason um, at 50p on their shelf. Uh, another book, 25 pence, is one of these Agatha Raisin and this one is The Potted Gardener. 
by MC Beaton. I love these little books. They are so much fun. They are now also a TV series over here in the UK, so why not? So Agatha is taken back when she finds a new woman ensconced in the affections of her attractive bachelor neighbour, James Lacey. The beautiful Mary Fortune is superior in every way, especially when it comes to gardening, and with Carsley Garden open day looming, Agatha feels this deficiency acutely. So when Mary is discovered murdered, buried upside down in a pot, Agatha seizes the moment and immediately starts yanking up village secrets by their roots and digging the dirt on the hapless victim. But Agatha has an awkward secret too. I have read a few of these, I've got a few on my Kindle, but for 25 pence, why not? This book was um, Pat Barker Regeneration and this was actually mentioned on Simon Savage Regis site this, this um, recently, last couple of days. I'll link his channel down below because he's fabulous, love Simon at Savage Reads, can't go wrong with him. I'll also leave Pete, link Peter Mon's channel as well because uh, anybody I mention I will link down below. Um, yeah, again it's set in, in the wars, World War One. At its centre is a real life encounter that occurred at Craig Lockhart in 1917 blah, between WHR Rivers and army psychologist and Siegfried Sassoon. I don't know, I love the photo on the cover, <laughs> I, just, I just love it, um, and it just looks really fascinating, and it's not huge, it's only like 250 pages long, so 25p people, and the one book I bought that was hardback, 50p, as the lady said, hardbacks are 50p mind, I'm like, yeah, it's fine, you know, it's 50p, <laughs> was Harlan Coben's Stay Close, now I love Harlan Coben, so I thought, why not three people, a second chance to put things right. And it says on the back, when the past refuses to stay buried, three people will discover that the American dream can be a nightmare. Ooh. So yes, 50p, it looks brand new. I love it. So the next two books were also free. Um, they have been lent to me by my friend Julie. Um, me and Julie were always trading book recommendations and lending each other books. So she's lent me these two. Um, this one she says she reads all the time and she just wants something quick to read and it's The Trouble with Valentine's Day by Rachel Gibson. Um, Valentine's Day sucks and this year it's worse than usual for Katie, Kate Hamilton as she tries to seduce a handsome stranger in a motel bar only to find out that he unfortunately has other ideas. Escaping from embarrassment to her grandfather's tiny town of Gospel, Ohio, she's determined to relax and enjoy some good, clean, small town fun. What she's not expecting is a reunion with Mr. Handsome Stranger, AKA Rob Sutter, who it just so happens lives in the town. What are the, what are the chances, huh? But then Rob and Kate find themselves in a compromising position in a local store after hours, giving the phrase clean up in aisle five a whole new meaning, and in the process causing a whole lot of gossip in in um, gospel. Sounds interesting. Like she like says, a quick fun read. The next book she lent me is called Judas Child and it's by Carol O'Connor. She said she read this book years ago and then I think she got it from the library or something and then she decided she wanted a copy of it so she bought it. A menacing and unsettling thriller set against a mysterious winter landscape that reflects the cold heart of a serial killer. Look at that. That is gorgeous. I, I mean, a lot of people don't like photo covers, but I think it depends on the photograph on the cover. I'm not keen on people photo covers, um, but I do like ones like this. That's a really good one. So those two were free. I'm on to the last three books. Now, many doctor's surgeries also have a charity book table. Mine is no exception. They do in Wales anyway. A lot of them have them in Wales. I don't know about anywhere else in the UK. But my doctor's surgery has one. In fact, I've donated a lot of books that I've gotten rid of to my doctor's surgery table. I think I kept it stocked for quite a while when we moved into this house because I was really, really trying to cull my book hoarding habit. Of course, now with booktube, it's gone out the window, though there will be an unha unhaul at some point in the future. So uh, these books I paid one pound for. And the first one is A Commonplace Killing by Sean Busby. Now, same what I'm saying about photographic covers. This one I actually do like because I just think it's very keeping in with the times. It's London, July 1946. A woman's body is found in a disused bombsite off of Holloway Road. She is identified as Lillian Frobisher, a respectable wife and mother who lived with her family nearby. The police assume that Lillian must have been the victim of a sexual assault, but when the autopsy finds no evidence of rape, they turn their attention to her private life. How did she come to be in the bomb site, a well-known lover's haunt? Was her husband seemingly unaware that she'd failed to come home on the night she was killed? 
In its deeply evocative crime drama, Sean Busty strips away the veneer of stoicism and respectability in post-war Britain to reveal a society riven with disillusionment and loss. Which I think it probably was very like that during the wars as well. Very sad. Anyway, so that's that one. And then I have got The Sound by Sarah Alderson. Again, this one was from um, The Works. <laughs> you know, three for five pound in the works, really good value, but uh, obviously you can pick it up cheaper at second-hand places. And uh, this one says, when aspiring music journalist Ren Kingston takes a job nanny in for a wealthy family on the exclusive island of Nantucket, playground for Boston's elite, she's hoping for a low-key summer reading books and blogging about bands. Boys are firmly off the agenda. What she doesn't count on is falling in with a bunch of party-loving private school kids who are hiding some dark secrets, falling possibly in love with a local bad boy and falling out with a dangerous serial killer. <laughs> so I like the sound of that. Again, it's a photo cover, but it's not too bad. Some of them are dreadful, but that one's not too bad. So that's that one. And the final book I picked up, um, I've heard a lot about this author, but I've never read her. It's a YA and it's Shiver by Maggie Stiefvater. Um I love this cover. This cover is just gorgeous absolutely beautifully designed um basically when local boy is killed by wolves grace's small town becomes a place of fear and suspicion but grace can't help being fascinated by the pack and by one yellow hide yellow eyed wolf in particular there's something about him something almost human then she meets a yellow eyed boy whose familiarity takes her breath away a chilling love story that will have you hooked from the very first page so that's book number 14 and i love it absolutely fabulous so it's just to show that you don't have to spend a fortune on books to do booktube because like i said 14 books for less than five pounds now the queen of booktube on a budget is hannah tay and i'm going to link, link her channel below because she's absolutely fantastic i'm just knocking the marilyn shelves around a bit here hannah tay always gets a lot of her books from libraries and charity shops she's definitely worth watching so i'll link her peter mon simon and simon of savage reads link all their channels down below in the debris for you to go and check out their sites if you like this video um yeah give me a thumbs up subscribe share and comment and i will see you soon happy reading bye